What would Yeshi do? A podcast dedicated to Yeshi Tsogil, the mother of Tibetan Buddhism. As you might recall from the previous episode, I am on a long journey throughout Asia and、uh, possibly other parts of the world. Last time we interviewed a Tibetan monk, Tashi Sangpo, in Boda, Nepal, from the Sakya lineage. Over the past week, I've had the privilege of going on a tour of Western Bhutan. Bhutan is a very beautiful place, which I highly recommend visiting. With a population of only 700,000 people, we managed to see the king of Bhutan twice, accidentally, as well as the director of tourism. I asked, more or less jokingly, if I could volunteer to teach yoga to Buddhist nuns in Bhutan. And the director of tourism said, sure. So that might be happening at some point in the future. For today's episode, I interviewed my friend and my guide through Bhutan, Chering Jamcho. Chering is 24 years old, a lovely human being, a sincere Buddhist, with what my dad would call a tantric sense of humor. We had a lot of fun. And so, without further ado, Let's get to that interview, shall we? Welcome to the What Would Yeshi Do podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much.、Uh, can you tell us your name? My name is Tsuring Jamso. And what does that mean? Like, Tsuring Jamso means a long life ocean. Nice. Jamso is、uh... ocean. And so, Tsogyo, I think, is、uh, ocean in Tibetan. So, Jamsho is the Bhutanese, Bhutanese word、yeah. that means the means same, same as Tsogyo. Nice. So, we first met when I was promoting the What Would Yeshi Do podcast. Yeshi do.、Yeah. And、uh, I was promoting it actually in Nepal, but somehow it ended up being promoted in Bhutan as、mm. well. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. I do remember. Like, first thing. When I was checking my Instagram,、mm-hmm. so I saw so a foreigner、mm-hmm. a, who got a un, unique Instagram name. What would we should do?、Mm-hmm. So it, it,、uh, it gave it me a lot of curiosity.、Mm-hmm. It gave me lots of thought.、Mm-hmm. So I started contacting you.、Mm-hmm. So that's why the interest in me、yeah. attracted to you. And I remember.、Uh... You told me you were from Bhutan, and at、yeah. the time I said, Bhutan, what's that? <laughs> I didn't, didn't know Bhutan、yeah. existed. But you told me that Yeshi is very、uh, well known and, and、yeah. revered in Bhutan. Bhutan. So yeah, I became Bhutan. very interested in Bhutan. And here we are in Bhutan, Bhutan. as、yes. we speak. <laughs> <Yes> . So,、uh, what's the name of this valley that we're in?、Uh, right now we are in Fobjika Valley.、Mm. And it's the home of which monastery?、Uh, it's a home for the. Uh, Nyingma Monastery.、Mm. In Bhutan, there's two k i n d of s y s t e m two k i n d of Buddhist system or Buddhism system.、Mm. One is Nyingma Pa and Kaju Pa.、Mm. And Nyingma is very popular in the eastern part of Bhutan.、Mm. And the Kaju is very popular in the western part of Bhutan.、Mm. So, p o b j i k a Valley falls under the western part of Bhutan. So, in the、uh, western part of Bhutan, there is only one Nyingma Monastery. That is Gante Monastery,、mm. which, where we are at prison. Where we went today. Yeah. To- so, today, just for the people listening, I、mm. know you and I both know,、mm. but、uh, today we went there、mm. and we touched the breastplate. The breastplate br- of Guru Padma Sambhava、yes. and the mala, mala, beads. mala beads of Guru Padma Sambhava, which has been preserved. From, from the beginning of the Guru Padma Sambhava's prison in Bhutan,、mm. which is in the 8th century.、Mm. So、it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's, it has been preserved by the, by the, the Rinpoche、mm. of this valley called Kante Tiku.、Mm. Kante Tiku. And he's been preserving, preserving the Nyingma, Nyingma region in this in the western part of Bhutan.、Mm. So, Right now, at present, he's the ninth reincarnation of this、uh, Gante Tiku.、Mm. 
of the Gante Tiku. Yeah, it was very special. Like when we touched the mala beads, I was just thinking, Oh Ma Home Vajra Guru, Chama City Home. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Well. And then right after that we saw that there were people carving in the monastery or yeah. right outside not in the temple part, temple part but just outside inside the grounds yes uh there were people carving wood pine mm. pine, pine wood pine. and i was drawn to a particular symbol with the two fish two of fish. happiness happiness the the knot of love, love. the lotus lotus of purity, purity all in one symbol and so, yeah, I got that symbol and, and intend for that to be the sort of, you know, the symbolic cornerstone mm. or seed, uh, seed for the Yeshi, Yeshi, Yeshi Sophia, Yeshi Sophia. Yoga, art and sound. yoga Art and Sound. Yeah. You can also make it as your logo. Yeah. Yeah. You were suggesting I put the yoga, yoga, man, yoga, at the yoga man at the top. Yeah. So it will be like kind of like a uh, Nyingma logo. Yeah. You can see the two deer holding the wheel of dharma. Oh wow! So Nima Nima logo is that this one? The two deer holding the wheel of dharma. And those two deer are Vishnu and Indra. Yeah, the two deer are known to be the Indra and Vishnu, which is the one of the Hindu gods. Two mm. of the Hindu gods. And it's the symbol of Nima. Yeah, it's a symbol of Nima that holding the wheel of dharma the first two disciples yeah actually the two deer are the first two students of buddha mm. and it's uh, if i narrate yeah, some story about it mm -hmm. so well buddha was meditating under the bodhi tree for the six years mm. for the six years to find the truth true meaning of life at that time after he he's done with the after he he was done with the meditation for six years, retreat for six years, so Indra and Vishnu, he, they transformed the god, Hindu god Indra and Vishnu, they transformed into deer, two deer, and they want to just see how Buddha's teaching, how good is Buddha's teaching. Mm. So when they went near Buddha's teaching and seek the teaching of Buddha, mm. they, they find the Buddha's teaching was brilliant mm. so it was so touched so yeah. touched them so so they after that they went to their Hindu followers and they mentioned that now you can also worship Buddha mm. because his teaching is very excellent mm. so now you can also worship Buddha that's why Hindu Hinduism also worship Buddha mm. wow the uh Today I learned about the black neck crane. Yeah. The uh so they go back and forth, they migrate from Tibet. They 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 have their children in Tibet and then in the winter time they mm. come to this valley. This valley, beautiful valley. But before they land, every time they do three Round. circumambulations around the monastery, monastery that yes. we were just at. Yeah, like so about the Black net green, mm. green. Yeah, is one of the endangered species in the world. Mm. So it can be only found in Bhutan and Tibet. Mm. Actually, they during summer time they migrate to to Tibet, mm. and during winter time they migrate to Bhutan. Mm. So each year the number of green has been increasing here in Bhutan. Thanks in large part to the efforts of the people here in this valley yeah. to preserve, preserve for them yeah. a place to eat and eat, mate meat. and not get attacked by and jaguars, jaguars and foxes. foxes. So we usually consider in Bhutan, like we consider black neck green as the bird from heaven. Mm. So we consider as a heaven bird. They carry the soul. So they carry the soul and they seem a very intelligent bird, one of the most intelligent bird, mm. as as they know how to uh, how to purify themselves, mm. how to pur purify themselves, and how to thank thank people. Yeah. So that's the reason they are when they when they come to Bhutan, they they arrive in Bhutan. They make a three circulation near the. Nima Monastery, mm. Gante Monastery. And when they leave When also. they leave also, they mm. do the same. That's amazing. And also, like, they are very intelligent. Like, well, well, they, 
well they they are about to depart they will they will be in fasting mm. they will be fasting the main reason of fasting is well they they depart their body should be light so yeah. they can fly yeah. easily wow yeah we saw one up close uh they what was what was the name of the uh the the place you, that's specifically for the crane the uh, preservation crane oh. information center oh yeah yeah that's right our government have even established a crane information center in fofjika valley hmm. so in that center they preserve they do preservation they they pass information and how importance of crane in the world mm-hmm. so it's one of the endangered species so they give also information to nearby the people yeah and so children in children school in the school that the because of the crane i mean it's it, it's such an interesting situation where because of the crane there's a mm-hmm. lot of tourists tourists because there's a lot of tourists, tourists. there's an increase in wealth increase of wealth yeah. and then people want their lifestyle to improve. to improve so it's important that every child in What this region should be knows educated. about the crane yeah, yeah. and should the be importance educated in the importance of the crane yeah so they're not uh, yeah. in danger making it worse yes. so there were 400 cranes last year 600 cranes this year yeah so it's good very good every year the number of crane is increasing yeah. every year yeah that's great so that kind of ties in nicely to uh the happiness gross happiness gross national happiness gross national happiness, happiness. So yes because one of those has to do with the environment the y- ecology yes definitely the gross national happiness is the main philosophy of bhutan mm. the secret behind the happiness of our country mm. is the gross national happiness gross uh, gross national happiness the concept itself was like firstly implemented by our oh, third king mm. So unfortunately he passed away at a very early age at mm. the age of 44. Mm. So after that the young fourth king he was at the, that time he was just a 17 years old. Mm. He was crowned king at the age after after the after the death of his father. Mm. So he was crowned king mm. at the age of 17 though the year was in 1972 mm. he was crowned king. So that time there was like Bhutan joined UNO in United Nation in uh, 1974 mm. so that time he was invited in the United Nation conference so at that time some some journalists asked so tell me something about Bhutan so he said gross national happiness gross national happiness yeah everybody's always talking about gross domestic product yeah. yeah gross national happiness everybody was talking about gross domestic product mm. how to increase the economic how to oh, how to increase the wealth of the country mm. so but his philosophy was simple he just said gross national happiness so it amazed the you know uh, the young journalist so the young journalist was thinking what is gross national happiness they felt funny mm. as so it's out of out of their imagination so the king to say that in our country we give more importance to gross national happiness than gross domestic product mm. which means we give more importance to happiness than the wealth mm. and the wealth comes second the first come the happiness of the people mm. so in gross national happiness there's four pillars that stand happen that suppose the gross national happiness philosophy mm. the first one is preservation of culture and traditions mm. and the second one is second most important thing is preservation of environment mm. and the, the third one is sustainable economic development we don't wa- we don't want a huge development Mm. we we want a small development which is sustainable to to to, to the citizens yeah. so to the people and the of course the fourth one is will be the good governments this four pillars are the main main supporter that supports gross national happiness in our country 
And he's the one who brought democracy, right? Like, yeah, yeah. The king who brought democracy. You don't hear like, that very often. Yeah. He is the king. With the four, we believe that he's a four vision king. Mm. Because his like philosophy, the he, the way he thinks, the way he believe, is like four vision. Nobody can think in his way. Mm. I promise. Mm. Like, like he's the only control. Uh, he's the only king who had been crowned at the age of seventeen, mm. and also, also he's the only only king he have given his throne to his son at the age of. Fifty-four. So at right now he's uh, he's sixty-three, sixty-three years old. I know that uh, a lot of people listening they think of royalty and monarchy as an older system. But you were explaining to me that the what the fourth king brought or implemented was something a lot like what the UK has. Yeah, so yeah. there is a parliament. Yeah, and parliament. There, there are elections. Yeah. The in two thousand eight, mm. well, our fourth king, he ordered, like, we want to give, he want to give democracy, democracy. He want to introduce democracy in Bhutan. Mm. So like, all the people, citizen of the people, are not happy about it. Because mm. they so, love their king. <laughs> because yeah. they love the monarch. Yeah. Because of him, we have been hap- we have been enjoying happiness. Peaceful, mm. everything is like, uh, like a Gurupatma Sambhava land. Right, pure land. So the same you were telling me the same medical medical access and ed- education education for the prince and for the poorest child. It's the same. same, like our king, our king's son, for example, our king's son, or the royal family, and a beggar's son, they will all they will have a similar kind of. Medical treatment, uh, similar kind of education, mm. and education and medical facilities are completely free in Bhutan. Mm. So, that's what he introduced. Everyone I've met in Bhutan speaks English. Yes, I can say it falls under G N H, preservation of culture, uh, culture and tradition. Mm. So, Buddhism has been part of our culture. So we need to promote, and we we need to know. I think ninety nine percent in our country knows about the culture and tradition. Mm. Tradition is because of G N H philosophy. We have we have been implemented to to know everything. Mm. So our mind has been set up to know everything. Yeah. Which is related to our culture and tradition. Yeah. So that's why I have no doubt that everybody doesn't know. Yeah. Things about it. Yeah. Like, about the. English speaking here in Bhutan, mm-hmm. so education, we give a modern type kind of education. Mm-hmm. So, our country being a small country, very small country, and seven hundred thousand seven hundred thousand people. people. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult for us to sustain in abroad. If but if if we might might go abroad, right? So, so most of properly like, uh, I think. In whole world, like maximum of the people, they do they don't know about the existence of Bhutan. Right. So it's better to know English, to learn English. Right. So that we can communicate when we are outside. Right. Yeah. Because people don't speak yeah. Bhutanese. Bhutanese. <laughs> yeah. They even don't know whether the Bhutan really exists or not. Yeah. Some people think it's part of India. Mm. <laughs> but it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very popular in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Japanese. They love Bhutan. Mm. They consider it's their land of happiness. Mm. So in Japan, there's so much development, so much comfort, so much luxury. Gross national product. Gross national product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, they are unaware of happiness. Mm. To be honest, I think they've forgotten the way of happiness, mm. the way to smile, mm. how to, the art of happiness have been dissolved in them. Yeah. Due to modernization, due to luxury, comfort, yeah, development, yeah. So they look Bhutan as the art of happiness. Mm. They want to learn art of happiness. So I think now the by the time Japanese has known that 
known that happiness can't be in wealth, comfort, luxury, yeah, and in technology. Mm. So they are looking forward to Bhutan mm. as the aim to get the get the art of happiness. So mm. that's why they are very much interested in Bhutan. Yeah, not only Japan. I think almost all the people who who come once in in Bhutan, they know the art of happiness. Mm. They are aware, aware that happiness can be this one, mm. this one, the this one. So, well, they go back, they come again and again. They they try to visit Bhutan and Bhutan. Yeah, they feel they spiritually feel connected with Bhutan. You see that this. Bhutan is a place where I can learn what the true meaning of life is and what is happiness. Mm. So that's why the person, the people who visit Bhutan, they like to to visit Bhutan again and again. Yeah. So I um I noticed that in the Nyingma and what was the other form? Um, in Bhutan, there's two kind of Buddhism, mm-hmm. two system of Buddhism. One is Nyingma. And one is Dupakaju. 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 Mm. Like uh, if I define them in a simple way, mm-hmm. Dupakaju is a in a is a is in a way which is in a very disciplined system. Mm-hmm. Disciplined system, and in Dupakaju, to 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 achieve anything, we have to follow from down step. To, from we have to start from bottom to up to mm. reach up, so this kind of, this kind of system is Drupakaju, and they are very disciplined. So if you if you join, for example, if you join our Drupakaju monk, mm-hmm. you have to strictly follow Drupakaju. You can't have a social life. Mm. You have to so strictly dedicate your life in Dharma. Yeah. So that's and that's Dukpakaju so in a simple defi- definition. Mm-hmm. And for the Nyingma, the Nyingma, of course, you guys all must be knowing the Nyingma is as Nyingma is one of the popular system in the Western world. Yeah. So Nyingma usually is in usually in a way of practical. Like tantric Buddhism, meditation, yoga, yeah. it's all related to Nyingma. Yeah. So, Nyingma, Nyingma here in Bhutan are practiced by Eastern part of Bhutan. Mm. So in the Western part of Bhutan, the mostly are Drupa Kajup. Mm. So I've noticed in both, there's a presence of, of course, Padmasambhava, mm. and, uh, of course, Lord Buddha. Mm. Manjushri. Mm. All I knew prior to being here and talking to you about mm. Manjushri was that it's a he or she? Like both, neither doesn't uh, you matter. You can say unisexual. E- either way, okay, <laughs> unisexual. But that he or she had carved the rivers and made Kathmandu. So when you ask someone in Kathmandu Kathmandu. about Manjushri, they say, oh, that sword? That's what Manjushri used to carve the rivers and produce Kathmandu and the lake bed and everything. So, but I learned a lot more from you uh, that Manjushri is uh, like a a god of wisdom. Yeah, god of wisdom. And then, so there's also Vajrapani Vajrapani. is is always present. Yeah. The god of energy. God of energy. And I I found it very interesting that Vajrapani means thunder water. Yeah. Um, And then also the great unifier. Uh, About the great unifier. He has a beard. He has a beard. And he's the one, he is the most important person in Bhutan. Hmm. So, without his existence in past, I think Bhutan wouldn't be at present. Now, uh, Shabdungawa Namgil, uh, the unifier, mm. his name is Shabdungawa Namgil. Mm. He's, he came to Bhutan in 1616. Mm-hmm. 1616 and... From Tibet. He's originally from Tibet. Mm. So, it is said that Dukpakajup system was brought in, in the world in the... 12th century, the the great master called Sampajari, mm. Sampajari in Tibet. So in the end of 1500, mm-hmm. um, there was two reincarnation of 
great masters, some mm. poetry. One is considered as a speech, one is considered as a mind. Mm. Right. So sometimes a person can reincarnate and their speech, their mind, mind body, and their body, body three, are three separate people. Three separate people. Mm. So at that time, the great master, Sampajari, who introduced Rukpaka Ajib system, was reincarnated in two different body. One is speech, one is mind. Mm. So at that time, in Tibet, there was a conflict. Conflict between the two uh, two reincarnation of of great Sampajari. Mm. Sampajari. And do you know the the full name of Sampajari is Sampajari Yeshitsoki. Oh, okay. Named after Yeshitsoki. Yeah. Mm. So at that time in Tibet there was conflict. Mm -hmm. So so Shabdungawanamgil Shabdungawanamgil or unifier. Mm -hmm. So he was disliked by the leader the called Sang Desi in Tibet. Mm. So moreover, Sang Desi supported the another reincarnation of great Sang Pajari Sogi. Mm. So the Shabdungwa Shabdunga Namgil he was looked down by the by the Sang Desi, the leader of Tibet at mm. that time. So at that time Shabdunga Namgil the unifier he came to Bhutan. People here in Bhutan know about Shabdunga Namgil that time because the, the unifiers, unifier grandparents, grandfather Nagyongachu has came to Bhutan and he has been he, he has been building some of the important fortress in Bhutan mm. in fifteenth century in fourteenth century. Mm. So that's why people in Bhutan some people knew about the Shabdunga Wanamgil. Yeah. So Shabdung so some people also invited Shabdunga Wanamgil. You can come to Bhutan. Mm. So that time, Shabdunga Wanamgil thought it's a good omen, and loss of good omen was shown on his way while he was coming to Bhutan. Mm. Bhutan, such as like a uh, a main deity of Bhutan, was showing a vision in his uh, showing a way in his vision that you mu you must fly to Bhutan, mm. and also and also some. Some of the Buddhist students who are studying in Bhutan, uh, who are studying in Tibet, mm -hmm. they also like advise, advise, you know, Tung, you can visit Bhutan. Yeah. So in Bhutan, lots of followers are there for you. So you must visit Bhutan. So that's why Shabdung Ngawanamgil, he came, he came to Bhutan in 1616. Mm. In 17th century, he came to Bhutan. So in Bhutan, like lots of people, like liked the teaching of Shabdunga Wanamgil, and so he was well treated by all the people here in Bhutan. Yeah. So he found the loss, loss happen, a uh, loss happiness here in Bhutan. Mm. So he came here, and there everybody liked him. So he was he was he was a. He was he will be definitely a great teacher as he's the reincarnation of great Drupakaj master who introduced Drupakaj Sampajari. Mm. So everybody liked him. So at that time when he came here he built lots of monasteries, fortresses and also also he brought a very important relic. Relic. It consider uh, we we call it at Ranju Kasapani. Mm. Ranju Kasapani is one of the important relic in Bhutan at present. So Ranju Kasapani Pani is the backbone of great great um Jub Master Sampujari. Mm. In Jari. In this backbone you can see the see the structure of God of Compassion. So, so he well, Shabdung Namonangil came to Bhutan. He brought that relic with him mm. in sixteen sixteen, and after that, like Shabdung was gaining lots of popularity in Bhutan. So every people in Bhutan liked him. So by the time 
Chang Desi, the leader of Tibet, came to know about the popularity of Shabdung in Bhutan. Mm. So Shabdung on Namgil, then, then uh, Tibetan invasion were started. Yeah. In total, there was seven Tibetan invasion in Bhutan. Mm. But, uh, but fortunately, we are about to defend our country. Mm. Our country and the technique, moreover, the technique, technique are all the technique, the credit goes to great technique of Shedunga Wanamgil. Mm -hmm. He have a great tactic to defend the Bhutan, defend Bhutan. So he saved, uh, saved Bhutan from Tibetan invasions. Mm. Tibetan invasions and also and also like he in Bhutan he's the one the unifier he's the one who have introduced who has who have introduced culture tradition mm. and the ones that are still used yeah. today like we saw at the fortress yeah. the other day yeah. same same everything like every culture tradition was all introduced by Mm. Because before that, different people in different parts of yeah. Bhutan had different things yeah. they were doing. But now there's a traditional Tradition dress. Traits. There's uh, different colors you wear depending yeah. on your station. Station. Uh, yeah. In 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 formal ceremonial you know, from some and some festivals. And even you can see the architect. So all introduced by Shabdungawanamgil. Mm. So he's a very important person in the history of Bhutan. Wow. So you can see he's the father of Bhutan. Hmm. Now, who was the one you were telling me that the architect uh, was was someone who wasn't an architect? You you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was that related to him? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he chose the architect based on yeah. something about some fruit in a bowl, right? So actually, like in the ex capital of Bhutan. Right. The original capital. The original capital of Bhutan. At that time, like original capital of Bhutan was built uh, in original like original capital of Bhutan, which has been capital till nineteen sixty nineteen sixty eight. Mm. It was the capital of Bhutan till that time. So at that time uh, during that period when Chaplingal Namgil was during, during the 17th century when Shepton Wawonongil was here in Bhutan so he already set up that Punaka will be the capital of Bhutan mm. so at that time he wanted to build a fortress fortress so fortress in Punaka which can be called as the capital fortress of the country mm. so he was confused where should I build the fortress he, oh yeah, he don't have any proper location. He don't have any idea. He was confused. Where will be the will be the capital fortress of Bhutan should be located. Mm. So he he was being thinking for a while, but but one 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 night he had a vision that the the main local deity of the Bhutan, Mahakala. Mm -hmm. In Sanskrit name Mahakala, in our language in Bhutan we call it Ishikembo. Mm. Go, he, he show, uh, he, he tried to pass the information. He saw a bird, a uh, raven, mm. raven, a raven was flying on the ridge, with the where the ridge looked like the elephant, mm. elephant shape, and the raven landed on the tongue, uh, on the tongue of the elephant. Mm. So, it symbolized that the Shabrungamun Angel came to knew that that Rabin was none other than the main local deity of the country, Ishikimbo, mm -hmm. the Mahakala, Mahakala. So he transformed into 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 the Rabin, and he just he wanted to show that your fortress should be there, mm -hmm. the location of the fortress should be built there. So now he had the location location now of the fortress where to build the fortress but he was confused how the fortress should look like mm. 
what kind of fortress should look like and how will be the fortress fortress architect and design will be so it gave him a lot of thinking so so therefore like uh, when he was at the prison prison location of the Punaka fortress mm -hmm. Punaka fortress when he came there the all the people around the village they came they came to welcome Shabdunga Wanamgil that time so everybody brought some brought wine some brought, brought rice some brought fruit so everybody offered him oh yeah everybody offered him but but one one poor guy he's actually a farmer so a farmer he have nothing so he brought a, a plate which is filled with jungle berry which is red in color mm. so he offered to the Shabdungonam Gil and Shabdungonam Gil, Gil said wow that is a very good omen you have shown to me mm. so so he told Shabdungonam Gil told to that person who brought the jungle berry and told now you will be the chief architect of this fortress that I'm going to build mm. so you will be the chief architect so that man he was confused mm. because he is he was a simple man he only know how to make the handle of the knife handle of the axe mm. he's a, just a small farmer and a very simple person so he was confused how can I do that so told, don't worry about it you have all the skills in you which is inbuilt in you mm. so better you got to spend a night here here at the prison location where the fortress is mm. For, fortress is so so the, the that man came, came to the fortress and spent a night mm. at night like he, he had an unusual vision that he was in a paradise of Guru Padma Sambhava mm. in a pure land yeah in that in that when he was in that vision he saw a beautiful fortress fortress and fortress and he was he, he by somehow through magical power he he captured all the details of that fortress in his mind and then by next day by next day when he met Shabtung Nongil and Shabtung Nongil asked um, will you be able to do that? You, do you have the design and architect in your head? so he said yeah I'm hmm. pretty sure now I have the concept the idea I'm ready to do it so after that he did this yeah, you know, he built this fortress. Oh. Wow! So, so this pretty, this probably this fortress is said that the similar kind of fortress is there in the in the paradise of Guru Padma Sambha in the pure land. Mm. That's beautiful. So uh, you mentioned um, Chenrezig, right? Chenrezig, Av Avalokiteshvara, Avalokiteshvara in the the backbone. So that's the other statue that's always present in the temples that we've been to. Um, do you remember you were telling me the story of how how Chenrezig ended up in the thousand armed form mm, yeah God of compassion God of wisdom and God of energy mm. those three promised themselves that God of, God of energy mm -hmm. he promised himself that he will give his power and energy to the to all of its samsara he will mm. spread his power energy in all in whole samsara and that's Vajrapani but that's Vajrapani in yeah. Sanskrit and Manjushri and the Manjushri the god of wisdom he, he also promised that I will give wisdom wisdom to all the living beings in whole samsara mm. and god of compassion also promised that she will help 
all the living beings to achieve enlightenment mm. achieve enlightenment so god of energy he his he, what he promised have been fulfilled like he have given he, he have spread his power and energy all over the samsara mm. and god of wisdom he he also fulfilled his his promise as as he have also given wisdom to all the living beings living creatures in whole samsara mm -hmm. but when it comes to god of compassion which is avalokiteshvara mm. known as kuan yin in china kuan, kuan yin in china in japan, japan. Mm. so she, she somehow she failed to she fill her promise mm. As Every whenever, time she emptied out hell, yeah. it would be full again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whenever she tried to empty the hell, again, it it is always full. No matter how much she tried, it's always the same. So, she went into, he went into lots of depression. Mm. So, so she she was very sad. So, after that of depression and sadness she she went near a, a rock mm. and bang bang in the on the rock for like uncountable or like uncountable until and unless she she were she were uh, he was torn into pieces mm. up to that the father of all buddha which is known as amitabha mm. the, the father first dayani buddha yeah mm. The father of all Buddha. So he came, he came, he came, he came, and he witnessed the God of Compassion pass away all into pieces. Mm. So well, Buddha Amitabha created thousand arms. All he joined, he joined the all the torn pieces, torn pieces of, torn pieces of God of Compassion, and he all joined them together and made a thousand arms mm. so that God of Compassion can be able to able to feature in in many ways mm. so he so she, he can help a lot of people with a thousand arms mm. that's why and also uh, so is Amitabha is the top head yeah and, and Vajrapani Vajrapani on the second and Manjushri, Manjushri also and helped Manjushri also helped and after the formation of thousand arms Manjushri came and uh, like God of Wisdom came and also God of Wisdom also donated his uh, um, his wisdom mm. you know to God of Compassion mm. and also like God of Energy and Power Vajrapani also donated the power and energy to God of Compassion mm. so now he's very powerful now yeah now he can he is more powerful than he was before yeah so now he can free lots of people from hell mm. and then but then there were tears so after that um, God of Compassion has two tears the first two tear from left hand side it was green Tara and the from right hand side it was white Tara mm. and after that there was a 21 tears so it's a, there is like total number of Tara is about 21 Taras. Mm. So each Tara has their different significance. Some Taras are for longevity, some some Tara for purification, some Tara for medita medication. Yeah. So lots of different activities. So all of them can help the whole Samsara to free, to get enlightenment. Yeah. So. It's a joint force of every joint force of every every bodhisattva was mm. to free to free whole samsaric living being. That's beautiful. To get enlightenment. Mm. So uh, Manjushri mm. uh, at one point incarnated and uh, shot an arrow. Do you remember that oh. story? Yeah, you mean to say that <laughs> the divine madman? The divine madman. Mad yes, <laughs> <laughs> I love the divine madman. <laughs> uh, about divine madman, he's one of the 
most unusual masters <laughs> in Buddhism. Yeah, that's the one where the phallus is the yeah. symbol. Yeah. Like, actually, the Dupakili, mm. the Westerner, known him as Divine Madman. Mm. Divine Madman is actually the animation, one of the animation of Manjushiri, mm. God of Wisdom. So he was, he was born in Tibet. Mm. He was born in Tibet. When he well, he was in Tibet. He has a vision. The Manjushri came in, came in his vision. Now you should go down toward the south part. South part. But he was confused. So where should I go in south? Mm. So. South is not a particular thing. Yeah. Part particular way. There's many way, many south. Yeah. So where should I go in south? He was confused. So. So he he landed up, like, he landed up shooting an arrow. So, he say he just prayed to God of Wisdom that wherever my arrow arrow goes, this will be my destination I will follow this arrow mm -hmm. wherever it goes so he shot an arrow and he followed that arrow and that arrow landed here in Bhutan mm. so he followed the arrow and here he gave him his teachings his like unusual teachings to many people and he also subdued lots of demon mm. like demon in the sense like bad obstacle in Buddhism, we don't believe in killing, hmm. killing or like vanishing the evil forces, demon and everything. Right. We believe in subduing the five defilement, five defilement, five defilement, five in in the evil. Yeah, in the, the evil, for the demon. For the demon. Turning them good. Turning them good and making them. To follow the right path. And those five defilements are hatred, hatred, ignorance, anger, greed, jealousy. Mm. These are the five main defilement. Defilement. If, if in this world, if we, if this five defilement is purified, then the your way to achieve enlightenment is no longer. Mm. It's just one step. To get enlightenment. Yeah. So, so being a human, being born as a human, is our, is our main duty to purify our five defilement, mm. which we have in. So we should always try to purify our five defilements. Yeah. So this is the main reason we are born as a human. So this is the, this is why we call it precious human life mm. so where we can purify our five defilement and get free from the samsaric rhythm yeah so the mad the divine madman um had a follower that he gave an odd mantra to yeah, <laughs> yeah there's an interesting story there's many stories about Drupakili, but mm -hmm. i will narrate you one thing yeah so back in you know Oh, in Drupakili, there was a true followers, follower of Drupakili. Mm. His name is Ulaga. Mm. He's actually considered as the king. King in one of the village mm. in Bhutan. It's called Chimi. Like right now, we call it the prison place. They call it Chimilaka. Mm. So he was the king in that valley. In that valley. At that time, like he was a great follower of great fo follower of Drupakili. Mm -hmm. And he always like Ulakya, he always wished to see Drupakili. Mm -hmm. And he always wanted to get a mantra from Drupakili. Mm -hmm. So at that time he met he met Drupakili and he asked for a mantra where he can chant every day, every night. Mm. So Drupakili they taught him a mantra, which is very unusual. 
this mantra concept of like very dirty mm-hmm. languages yeah so so you but the will like have so being a true followers so whatever the dupakile let him let him practice he never give up so he keep on practicing that mantra no matter where he is he always used to chant ch- chant that mantra which is like consists of very dirty languages yeah. so he always used to chant that language that languages in wherever he find a place at home in the gathering and everywhere he was like you can say 24 hours chanting this mantra mm-hmm. of guru of tupakile mm-hmm. at that time the people and the villagers they thought our oh, king has gone mad <laughs> so because like he never bother where he is because he was always ch- chanting the chanting the orthodoxic ortho uh, ortho toxic uh, ch- mantra mm. which is taught by tupakile mm. so he was chanting that even in gathering even at home so villagers were had a, had a complaint over his unusual behavior mm. so everybody complained so that's why he was separated from the society mm. so because of his unusual behavior people call it as consider as tabu so he was out of the society he was kept aside from the society mm. so there no matter what he he always keep on chanting the mantra he always keep on chanting the mantra at the end he he have you know, he he got freed from samsara mm-hmm. got enlightenment mm-hmm. so basically in this story it relate that no no matter what our, our dedication our path our path mm-hmm. we should always follow the one path that is to strike for enlightenment mm. so this is the only path we should follow yeah no we should not bother what the world has to say for you yeah what what were the words though do you know what what they were in english i take refuge in an old man just in penis withered at the root fallen like a dead tree i take refuge in an old woman's facet vagina collapsed and impenetrable and sponge like i take refuge in the whirl young tigers thunderbolt rising proudly indifferent in death i take refuge in the maddened lotus oh, filling her with rolling bliss waves raising her from shame and inhibitions wow that's powerful cuz i think i mean it among other things it gets right to like a lot of people when they're young mm. they're afraid to get old yes. and so they're thinking oh well now i have this this great virility but oh i'm afraid to get old mm. and have it go away but that that mantra is saying i take refuge in i find my peace in mm. the one that doesn't work anymore and also the one that works yes. so it's not favoring the old one or the young one and it's getting right to the point of rather than just saying i take refuge in the god and goddess what does that mean is that mean a young god or goddess mm. an old god or goddess and that actually i'm i'm raving a little bit but it get it gets to several points like there's you know the glorification of the young woman and the ignoring of the old woman and that's that's uh sort of a samsaric ignorant kind of nice. uh way that that people perceive the world where where they give all this you know attention and praise to the young woman who's beautiful and then pay no attention to the older woman but this is giving equal credit to the old man the young man the old woman the young yes. woman and and getting right to the point of what that means without without tiptoeing around it yes. that's a powerful mantra you know i mean that's like people maybe they just heard oh there's bad words in it and they or oh that's that couldn't possibly be good mm. that couldn't possibly be holy but i i wow they yeah, i recognize the holiness in that mantra that's beautiful so you were saying that um Pad- padmasambhava i had previously thought he was was born in in nepal 
but he, I guess he was born in present day Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, he was uh, became a prince or a king when he was yeah. young. Like Guru Padma Sambhava, like his spiritual father is Buddha Amitabha. As you all know, mm. that Buddha, um, Buddha Amitabha is considered as the father of all Buddha. Mm. So his Guru Padma Sambhava's spiritual father is Buddha Amitabha, and his spiritual mother is Lotus, mm. Lotus Flower. Yeah, and he was born in the lotus. He's he he's known to be the lotus born baby. Mm. Lotus born baby. So in seventh century. In seventh seventh century, he was born in a lotus. Is that the seven hundreds or the like the eighth century? Uh beginning of the eighth century. Sorry. Right. Right. Yeah. Be, uh, like beginning of the eighth century, like in. Seven, seven, fourteen, or seven twenty eighty. Mm. So it falls on the eighth century. Yeah. So at that time, um, Guru Padma Sama was born in lotus flower, in a lake called Danakosha, mm. Lake Danakosha, which is, which is, in the province of Pakistan. Mm. And that lake is in in the area that that lake fall, falls under the area of Odiana. Mm. He was working, do, practicing tantra. He left to follow the Buddha path, mm. and he was practicing tantra with his first, they say, consort, mm. his first, I guess, girlfriend or partner, mm. magical partner, um, who was a princess from yeah. a different area yeah. in Pakistan. Yes, and then they practiced for a long time, mm. and uh, but it was illegal. So his father and the girl's father. Was it Padma Sambhava's father? No, no. No, no, no. It was the girl's father. Yeah. The tried to set them on fire, yeah. but but the fire turned into a lake. Yeah. Yes. And the lake, what was the lake uh, called? So, uh, Lotus Lake. Mm. We usually call it Topema. Mm. And it's in in Himachal, Himachal in India. Mm. In that that lake is lake is in Rivasul, mm. in in mm. India. And so after he had taught everything he knew to her, uh, they he moved moved away and went to Nepal. Nepal. And that's where he met the Nepali. Nepali consort. Yeah. What was her name? Gala City. Mm, right, right. And so they practiced together for a while. For a while. And then he went to, to India? Uh, India in Assam. And met the Indian princess. Indian. Was, she, was she a princess? Yeah. No, mm. no. No. No, no. She's not a princess. Oh, okay. She is, her name is Sita Devi. Mm. And she's the one that's usually up to his, uh, on his right hand. No, no, the right hand is the one who met in Rivasal, the Lotus Lake. Oh, okay. Pendarawa. Oh, that was his yeah. first wife or concert. Yeah. And then, uh, then he went to Bhutan. Yeah, after Assam, like, he was being invited by the second Dharma king to help him build the some uh, Sami monastery. Okay. So that time, the route was uh, the route had to pass through Bhutan. Oh right. So it was his first visit to Bhutan. Oh, I see. And that was when he met Yashi Tsogil. Oh no no no, not in Bhutan, but when he got to uh, Tibet. Tibet. Yeah. In Tibet. He went there. Yeah. Firstly, he helped with the Sami monastery, mm. and he, and he made the, he made. Oh, uh, Ishisugi. Yeah. The Ishisugi actually was a was a was a queen. Queen. Yeah. Uh, for the second Dharma king, Tisun mm. And he taught her. So by that time, he had been, he had been practicing and learning and traveling and yeah. practicing and learning and traveling. So by the time he met her, he had a lot to teach. Yeah, a lot. And to so teach. she ended up being known as his. Speech. His speech. Yeah, she memorized every everything, everything he said, yeah. which He's is why we know he exists. Yeah. <laughs> Ishito, Ishitogi is one of the important consort of Guru Padma Sambhava. Yeah. Because, like, uh, Ishitogi, he had a very skillful in writing mm. and revealing. So that's very why educated. Educated. Yeah. So she she's an excellent in 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 communicating. Yeah. So the so Ishitsuki is the one 
who have written and passed the, all the teachings of Guru Padma Sambhava to the others. Mm, to the world. Yeah, to the world. Mm. So, she is, she is okay, is the one of the most important consort of Guru Padma Sambhava. And they came to Bhutan. Yeah, they, they came to began. Bhutan. Mm. So, you can in Bhutan you will find lots of evidence of Ishisogi mm. where she had been meditated and everything. Mm. And Isha in Guru Padma Sambhava I have a consort here in Bhutan too. Mm. It's called her name her name is Tashi Kenden. Mm. She is considered as the activity of Guru Padma Sambhava. Oh I see. So there's the activity, the mind, mind body body Words, mm-hmm. speech, speech, yeah. And uh, is there a fifth one? A fifth one, I'm, I'm not able to remember. <laughs> <laughs> so the mind was. Uh, do you know which was which? Uh, mind is considered as the Mandarava, his first consort. Okay. Mandarava. She knew his mind. Yeah. And then, the and body. The, the body is in the Nepali, mm. the Gala city, and the mind body the speech. You obviously know is. Yeah, she, 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 yeah. And the activity is Trashik and then mm. a consort from Bhutan. And most of these, um, I've you know, seen, at least in Nepal and probably in Bhutan too, mm. statues of them. Mm. They they often have uh, a, a Vajra or Dorja. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, the, the staff with the three heads oh. and the trident, some of them carry that as well. So what else could you tell me about Yeshi Togil? She's actually a queen, a very kind-hearted, loving, caring queen mm. back in Tibet. Yeah. So, so, King Tisung Desen, King Tisung Desen, the Dharma king, Dharma second, king, Dharma. second Dharma king, mm-hmm. he invited Guru Padma Sambhava to Tibet to build the Same Monastery. Mm. So that time, Same Monastery was like, like, whenever the construction was they were having construction of Sami Monastery. Lots of evil were humming. Right. Humming. Humming. So, King Tisung Tisung, the second Dharma King, invited Guru Padma Sambhava to help him sort out the problem. Mm. So, well, Guru Padma Sambhava came there, met, uh, came there, and he had Sami Monastery. But in return, he told, Guru Padma Sambhava told, I want your going to be my consort. Mm. So the King Tisung Desin he accepted. Yeah. After that Ishisoki followed Guru Padma Sambhava and she have played a very important role in spreading the teachings of Guru Padma Sambhava mm. in many regions. Yeah. In Nepal, Bhutan, India. So he's one of the important figure who have rebuilt the Reveal the teachings of Guru Padma Sambhava. Mm. She is considered uh, as one of the animation of go- go- Goddess of Longevity, mm. which is just called Lujipamo. Oh, okay. Mm. Goddess of Longevity. She's also considered as the animation of Longevity. Mm. Go- Goddess of Longevity, Lujipamo. Mm. The way that I was reading it, at least in uh, uh, Lotus Born and Lady of the Lotus Born, was that. There, there are levels of enlightenment and levels of that. That in order to open up to these levels, he needed the perfect person, yeah. uh, who was completely devoted, completely pure at heart, completely, uh, you know, devoted to the Buddhist path and to the B- Buddhist mm. Dharma. And it just so happened that it was Yeshi, mm. and so he said, "Is she and I together can open these doors and can can reach these levels through tantric practice?" Yeah, and um, yeah, the descriptions of what they did, you know, I, I, she doors were opened up for her. Doors were also up and opened up for him, and he he hadn't he wasn't able to attain those mm. those levels yet until until he was working with her. So that's very interesting, kind of, kind of uh, at the at the root of Nyingma. Nyingma. Yeah. So it's so gay. In Bhutan, like, you can find lots of evidence of a presence of uh, it's so gay mm. in Bhutan. Yeah. There's like more than like hundred 
evidence where Isoge and Guru Padma Sambha has been present. Yeah. So still, we have been preserving, preserving their evidence here mm. in Bhutan, and we consider it as a very holy and sacred place. And I I noticed Yeshi is a very common name here. Yeah, in Bhutan, like lots of people, lots of women, even men. Men too. Yeah. Men too. They have. A uh, similar Yeshi. kind of name like Ishe. Yeah. So Ishe probably derived from Ishe Sugil. Yeah. The the consort of Guru Padma Sambo. So the first time I met someone named Yeshi, I was through the podcast, of yeah. course, and uh, and I asked her. You know, I said I'm I'm uh, going to be going on a pilgrimage, and I I you know have the podcast what would yeshi do so mm. since you're yeshi tell me what would you do and she said well i'd go to tiger's nest and she told me about yeshi transforming into a tiger yeah, and riding on her yeah. back and she flew and and yeah. uh, landed on tiger's nest yeah like tiger nest like ishisugi grupadmo sambhava mm-hmm. and ishisugi was in bhutan mm-hmm. in eastern part of bhutan so they came to know about the existence of some evil forces here in, in the western part of Bhutan, mm-hmm. where the, the tiger is, is at present. Mm-hmm. So they came to know about it. So Ishizhoge transformed transform herself into a tigress. Mm-hmm. And Guru Padmasambhava, riding on the tigress, came, to, came from eastern part of Bhutan to the western part of Bhutan mm. in Paro where the current Taiwanese is mm. so there they subdued the demon mm. and and they did lots of meditation yeah so meditation and it also mentioned that this place will be playing a very important role in future mm. so after after that loss of like great masters Great Buddhism masters have came there to meditate, retreat, and many things has happened in that area. Mm. So even like the great master like Mila Repa, Chaptunga mm. Wanamgil, Thong Thong Gyalpo, the Iron Man. So many great masters have came there to meditate. Mm. So Tiger is, is one of the, the fully blessed pilgrimage for Buddhists. Mm. That's why all over the Buddhists in the world, they like to visit Tiger Nest. And we're going to be going in a few days. Yeah, definitely. We're the last day. So, I, uh, before we close, I want to let everyone know that sharing has been absolutely wonderful and we've been having a great time and thank you oh absolutely, absolutely. and uh, and you're a great guide and you're actually going to be opening your own travel agency yes. soon. That's great news. As I will be helping if anybody who is interested to visit Bhutan, I'll be very much interested to show our culture, talk about the spiritual life here, talk about Hishi, yeah. Hishi Tokil, talk about Guru Padma Sambhava teaching. It will be great for me. And to find out what, what your interests are, if you have a particular interest in coming to Bhutan, because we, we have been corresponding for a while, and he came to find out yeah. about my father and about my background, yeah. and found out, okay, so your interest is specifically Yeshi Tsogil and Nyingma Buddhism. And mm. so, uh, like we talked about in the beginning, having that very beautiful experience today, touching the breastplate and breastplate. the mala. mala. And, uh, you know, I mean, so this has been great for me. And I know that uh, when people are interested in going to Bhutan, they, they look up and they see, wow, there's all these different travel agencies. Which one should I should I go to? So I just want to recommend uh, my friend Chering Jamcho. Jamcho. And uh, if you go to the website, it's uh, yeshistudiola.com forward slash capital W, capital W, capital Y, capital D. Or you can just go to yeshistudiola.com and click on you know, the link to what would Yeshi do and you'll find the website. If you go to the actual, the actual episode, if you're listening to this on iTunes or something like okay. that, if you go to the website for this episode with Charing, then uh, click on the link to his name and you'll get to his Facebook, Facebook page yeah. and you can contact him and say, Hey, I want to come to Bhutan. Where do I start? And then that will be great for you. It'll also be great for him. And, um, 
And I want to thank you very much for being my guest on What Would Yeshi Do? Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a privilege Absolutely. to be in your host, to be your guest. Absolutely. And uh, do you have any closing thoughts before we uh, end the episode? So, like, uh, I just want to say that say that we must follow the right path. Mm. And the main reason for, for being born as a human, we should be very grateful. And we should know that human life is very precious. Mm. And the main reason for becoming, to be born as a human is to, is to, is to purify our five defilements, mm. which is ignorance, greed, anger, hatred, jealousy. Mm. These five defilements in us make us suffer in this samsara mm. again and again. So if you want to get free from samsara, we have to, we have to like, subdue these five defilements in ourselves mm. so that you can be a pure person to achieve enlightenment. Mm. So I wish all the people around the world who are listening mm. and as listening me and Edward talk, I want all the people to achieve enlightenment. Mm. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charing, for being our guest on the What Would Yeshi Do podcast. Special thanks to the singing nuns at Tachij Khan, who you are listening to right now. And of course, special thanks to you for listening to this podcast episode. To the north and to the south, to the east and to the west, to the spirits of light among us, and to the spirits below, we send out our reverent love and compassion. May all beings be happy. May all beings be serene. May all beings be in peace. Good night.